Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, let's discuss a quick example on integrals and look at some trigonometric substitution and go over the integral that I uh, went over in my earlier video on the catenary proof. But I use a calculator for that, and in this video, we'll do that. We'll solve it manually. So basically, the example recall from my earlier video on the derivation for a catenary curve. And I'll put that in a link in the description below, so make sure to watch that. And basically that I save time and solve the following integral using an online calculator. And this is the integral integral from of uh, 1 divided by square root p squared plus 1 dp. And I show that it equal, just the calculator solves it equals to ln absolute value square root p squared plus 1 and then plus p and plus a constant c. So now let's solve this manually. So what, what I'll do is I'll just write this as i equals 2 or put this as i equals to that integral. So uh, i for integral. So now we have, let's write this down, square root p squared plus 1 and then dp. So what, what we have is something like this. We have a p squared plus 1 that is a square root. It's not too straightforward how to solve this. And I'll show you why we need to do trigonomic uh, substitution. Basically the idea is we want to get rid of the square root sign. So what we will do is recall the trig, uh, the, the popular or or just the uh, well-known trig identity sine squared uh, plus cosine squared equals to one. Yeah, so if we just recall this one, and then what we want is a uh, something that looks like a p squared plus one. And what we could do here, if we divide both sides by cosine squared like this, we'll get the other trig identity. And then if we divide this out by cosine squared x on both sides, this becomes basically tangent squared x. And now this cancels the cosine squared, that just becomes one. And then this here, that's just by definition secant squared x. Yeah, so look what we have here. So we have a tangent squared uh, plus one, that equals to just secant squared x. And then we have a p squared plus one. And then for the square root, we can get rid of that. So that's what we're gonna use for our trig substitution. So what we're gonna do is trig uh, substitution, substitution. So we want a tangent squared plus one. So what we'll do is I'll, I will basically let p equals two tan, and I'm going to use the variable just u. And then we take the um, derivative dp is going to equal to uh, the recall from my earlier video, the derivative of tan is going to be secant, yeah, secant squared x, and then uh, I mean uh, not x, u, u there du. So you can see that uh, the derivative of tan in my earlier video in the link below as well, where I showed it's that. So now what we can do is plug that in for dp and this square root well, uh, p squared plus one. Yeah, so what we end up having is i. I'll just write this down again. So i equals to square root p squared plus one, and then dp. So then the p is gonna be tan u, so we have a now square root tan u squared plus one, and then replace, uh, yeah, we have the integral signs there. And then replace the dp, we're replacing with a secant squared u du, like that. And now what we could do is, well, we know tan squared u by this uh, identity that's just going to be secant squared. So this equals to like this. I'll just write the secant squared u over here and then divided by square root secant squared u and the du. This becomes, well, that's just going to be secant squared u over, uh, this is going to be, this, uh, the square is going to cancel with square root. So it does just going to be secant u du like that. And now this equals two. Well, that just cancels. So now we just have a giant integral of secant u, like this. C secant u du. And now the integral of this one right here. This is again from my other uh, video. This is going to be ln of absolute value, and then it's going to be secant u plus tan u like that plus c. And I'll write. Uh, basically, this is from my earlier video, and you can see that also in the description below. Yeah, like this earlier video. And now what we have to do is we'll replace the u. We have to get the in terms of p there, and to do that, well, what we know is 
Well, we know that u, we let, we let p equals to 10 u, so we have that, that variable. So p equals to 10 u. And remember, tangent is just going to be opposite over adjacent. And where the opposite is just, well, it's p over 1 like that. That's just p right here. So we have this value. I'm just going to circle that. That's p. And now it's opposite over adjacent of a triangle. If we were to draw this out, we get a triangle like this. Yes, we have a triangle there, the angle is u, and then the opposite is 1, the adjacent is p. And now using Pythagoras, this distance is going to be p squared plus 1, and then square root like that. We just take the square of both sides and then square root. And now we can take the secant of this, so basically the secant u of this angle, this equals to, recall that secant again is just by definition 1 over cos u. This is going to equal to now, instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, we have now uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, where this equals to, yeah, we just, this equals to now the hypotenuse is square root p squared plus 1 over 1 like that. Yeah, here I just moved it over there, and then just so we could put this and get rid of the 1 over here. So then that means, yeah, so we just have secant u equals to, yeah, equals to square root p squared plus 1. So that's what this is. That's going to be square root of p squared plus 1. That's going to be, well, just p. So finally, take this all the way down. We get our integrals going to be equal to ln of uh, absolute value square root p squared plus 1 and then plus p and then plus c like that. So that is what our answer is. But what we could do is uh, we could even simplify further. And that is because note, since we have yeah, this square root p squared plus 1. So this absolute value, square root p squared plus 1, well, it's greater than 0. But it's also greater than square root if we just remove that 1. It's, it's uh, greater than square root p squared because it's, uh, you're just adding a 1 to whatever this value is. And now we're. Where this value right here, this uh, square root p squared, this equals to, well, the absolute value of p. These just cancel, but, uh, but inside the square root needs to be greater than, than 0. So it, this has to be the absolute value of it. And also, uh, this square root p squared plus 1, well, that's greater than 0. Because p squared is always positive, and there's always that 1 there. Actually, I believe this is actually greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 1. Yeah, if you put a 0 there, that's just going to be 1. And if it's like anything higher, or if you put another 1, it's going to be square root 2 and so on. So yeah, it's greater than 1 or equal to 1 like that. So thus what we have is is now this value, or actually uh, we take this whole, uh, this absolute value, yeah, this absolute value right here, we can get rid of that. So that means now the absolute value of square root p squared plus 1 plus p yeah, this means that, well, this square root p squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and the absolute value is greater than the absolute value of this p, or just the value here is greater than the absolute value of p. So this, whatever this is, even if it's really negative, this one's going to be larger than it and positive. So you're always going to have a greater than 0. Actually, yeah, this is going to equal to, yes, yeah, without even the square, I mean, without even the absolute value. So this is going to be square root p squared plus 1 plus p, and this is greater than 0, like that. Yeah, so thus, the absolute value, we can just remove it, because with, even without it, it's still going to be greater than 0. So thus, we have i equals 2 ln, and now we can just remove that absolute value, just put a bracket, so we don't need to deal with these absolute values. So square root p squared plus 1 plus p, you know, plus p, like that, and then plus c. So there is our final simplified answer like that yeah, and more useful answers so now we don't need to worry about absolute value anyways that's all for today if you follow it along and uh, yeah it's pretty uh, detailed derivation right here of this uh, just this integral on in this example it was all for today if you learn like always you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing viewing these notes as in article format on steam it so yeah check it out there also check out my new math forum for you. Anyways, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.